rest of you say hallelujah. <laughs> wow. How many of y'all can testify that um, it is well with your soul? You know, there's something special about when we as God's people come together. Um, there's power in this place. I mean, it looks good in here today. Um, we're going two services on Easter. It looks like we're going to have to. Amen. Isn't that good? When the, when the devil thought that the church was down, we're going to come back stronger. We're going to come back healthier and better. So watch out, hell. Here comes Elkhorn. Amen. Somebody give him one more big old praise in here. Amen. It is well with my soul. Hallelujah. You know, God spoke to me while I was back there. He said, that song, it is well with my soul. If we really believe that, it'll get you out of the dip. If you really believe that song, not just the words, but you've made it a part of you, who you are. If you really believe it is well with my soul, no matter what the government's doing, no matter how the church acts and how people act, if you truly believe it is well with your soul, that right there by itself will get you up out of the dip. Somebody say amen. amen. So here's what I want to do. Uh, I want to conclude this series today, I think, <laughs> on uh, Pursue God, and this is part five, Don't Quit in the Dip. Don't quit in the dip. Go ahead and look at your neighbor and just tell them, say, don't quit in the dip. Come on, tell somebody else. Don't quit in the dip. One more time. Don't quit in the dip. So watch what the Lord says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. I want to, I want to preach this. Got a lot of ground to cover, but I, I, want to, I want to take my time also and make sure this gets in your spirit. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. To me, one of the most profound verses in the Bible. We have quoted this uh, a lot. But Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, and I speak this over everybody here today, watching by Facebook, website, YouTube, and all those at the Taylor County Detention Center. Because we're reaching thousands and thousands of people. Somebody say, thank you, God, in the midst of a pandemic. So, man, God's good. Watch this. I got good news. You can't stop him. You can't stop Jesus. That God that lives inside of you is alive and is roaring like a lion. And so to be careful today, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says these words, reading out the NIV, let us not, uh-oh, let us not become weary. In other words, tired in doing good. Let us not become weary, tired in doing good. For at the proper time, hallelujah, in the right season, in God's timing, we will. Everybody say, I am. I am. Yeah, watch. He says, you're going to reap a harvest. You will reap a harvest if. If. So the only way you will not reap a harvest is if you quit. I'm going to read it. Look. Let us not become weary, tired, and doing good. For at the proper time in the right seasons, in God's timing, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Come on, y'all praise him this morning. Yeah, y'all praise him. Listen, some of you's on the verge. You're thinking about it. You're sitting there going, man, preacher's done read my mail. No, watch this. Holy Ghost done read your mail. I love this. He said, God said this. If you don't give up, I'm preaching to somebody today. If you don't stop, if you don't quit in the dip, you will reap a harvest. Woo. God said that. Watch this. Brian Rafferty did not write that. Brian Rafferty just read that this morning. God, working through Jesus Christ, working through the Holy Spirit, said that. See, we have way too many people. We have way too many people, way too many marriages, way too many churches giving up. Stop quitting. So I just stopped by. To tell somebody here today to make a quick announcement, you got to get your want to back. You got to want to get better. You got to want your marriage to work out. You got to want to get off that old IV. I just stopped by to tell somebody today, I'm going to hook you back up to a Holy Ghost IV and pump some Jesus juice back up in you. You got to want to get this stuff. If you watch, you've got as much of Jesus as you. Don't be hating on people because some people want a double dose. 
There's some people, man, listen, you've got to get your want to back. I refuse to sit back and allow the enemy to keep messing with God's people. I'm tired of the devil messing with God's people. I'm tired of the church just sitting back, lackadaisical, and just not doing anything when we've got all power. We've got all authority. We've got the Holy Ghost living in us. Living on the inside of us. So listen, I just served the devil notice today. He's trespassing. I need somebody to agree with me. It's time to evict the devil. Hallelujah. It's time to stand up and be the church and not quit in the deal. I need somebody to agree that with me. You say, Brian, it's all about the hype. Huh? No, 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 no. Because watch this. What you've got is going to eventually come through. Whatever's in you. If that old cussing spirit's in you. It's going to come out. If, if, if you got whatever spirit that you're carrying that's inside of you, eventually that spirit is going to come through you. Well, Brian, I don't understand why Christians are so mean. I do. They ain't a Christian. <laughs> oh, is everybody good? Everybody say, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So listen, how do you get out of the dip? This is the last one I'm going to preach on this. So I want you to lean in. Give God your ears. I want you, to, I want you to listen to thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Because some of you are on the verge of quitting. Some of you are on the verge of getting out of your marriage. Some of you are you're going from church to church to church to church. Have you not noticed there's a commonality in churches? It's called people. And as long as you have people, you're going to have problems. I highly advise Christians to learn to love each other. Get along with each other. Bring the best out of each other. And watch this. Have fun with Jesus. I refuse to let the devil outdance me today. I refuse to allow the devil to have more fun than what I'm having in here today. If you're born again saved and know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you've got something to celebrate today. You ain't going to hell. Quit acting like it. Is everybody good? Say, I'm good. So how do you get out of the dip? Turn to your neighbor and say, how do you get out of the dip? Don't call him a dipstick. Just, just say, how do you get out of the dip? So I want Casey to put a picture up on big screen here. Um, B.J. Price sent this to me, and I told B.J. I'm going to preach this. And so if you fail... Never give up because fail means these words. First attempt in learning. There is a lesson to be learned in the dip. I told you all this last week, but this just confirmed it. Some of you get in a dip and you're like, I can't take it no more. Watch this already. I'm not one of these pastors going to get in front of you and say, oh God, it's going to be okay. Watch this. The dips are real. The dips are hurt. But also, if you get this word in your spirit, first attempt in learning. It doesn't mean you're a failure. As a matter of fact, it just testifies that you're still alive to fight. And it's not the end. In fact, end means effort never dies. I need, I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. You may hit me. You may stomp me. But watch this. I'm getting back up. I'm not going to die. I serve a God if you, even if you put him in a tomb. Hallelujah. On the third day, he don't like it. He gets back up. Hallelujah. We need some churches. We need people that no matter what's going on in your life, you're not going to stop. You're not going to quit in the dip. As a matter of fact, you're going to, it's just an effort that never dies. It never dies. And if you get no as the answer, yes, no, wait. Yes, no, wait. That's some of you praying right now. He said, Brian, I've been praying for five years. I told you last week, Abraham prayed for 20. Yeah. If you get no as an answer, remember no means next opportunity. I'm coming back. I'm not talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm talking about I'll be back. I'm talking about, listen to me, this is just, it's not no. I'm not out. I'm not clocking out. 
I, I'm just telling you, there's going to be another opportunity, another door, another time in my life that God's going to open that door. And if I'm down, I'm not stopping. I'm not going to quit. I'm going to get back up. I'm going to stand back up. I'm going to pray it back up. And it's, a, it's just another opportunity for me. It's just another opportunity for me and for you. So you got to change. Watch what it says. Last one, look, look, look. Change your what? Look at me. Elkhorn, I'm your pastor. Change your mindset. If I hand you a blank check, now I got y'all's attention. And I said, you fill it out. I bet you would add zero after zero after zero. How come Christians are going to God's spiritual bank and coming out with pennies? All things are possible, Brother Brian. Do you believe that? Do you believe you can raise the dead? See, I, y'all listen. Don't, don't, please don't read your Bible and let dust get on it. God says you would do greater things, Allison, than what Jesus Christ himself did here on earth. I hold every one of you to that mandate. This, you are the answer. God has trusted you with somebody else's problem. So listen, I'm just telling you in Jesus Christ, you've got to change your mindset. You've got to change your mindset. You're not defeated. You're more than a conqueror. Yeah, I don't care if the whole world comes against you. If God be for you. You've got to have this kind of mindset, especially to make it in a devil's world. You've got to have that kind of mindset. Because watch, sickness is going to come. Hard times are going to come. Bankruptcy is going to come. Foreclosure is going to come. Hard times are going to come. Operations is going to come. Diabetes is going to come. But how are you going to handle it? You've got to change your mindset. You've got to change your mindset. I know the school system's in a pandemic. Watch this. whoop de doo High school seniors, what are you going to do about it? Or are you going to sit back and say, oh, Brian, I got to go virtual. Jesus is virtual this morning. What excuses are we giving? I'm just telling y'all, hallelujah, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If this side, all the way over to this side, and from front to back, top to bottom, would change your mindset, we'd make a difference today. Nobody dies and goes to hell. You wouldn't believe the Christian come to me and say, Brian, do you really believe that? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Watch this. I mean, here's something else I've learned after 24 years of ministry. Something else I've learned after 24 years of ministry. Okay, switch that other picture for about, yeah, watch this. <laughs> if you get addicted to the presence of God, you can't get addicted to anything else. Yeah, get addicted. Get addicted. Matter of fact, make that person so uncomfortable sitting beside you, either they're going to join in or get up and leave. Hey, get addicted to Jesus Christ. Because what? I'm just telling you. Y'all wouldn't believe. Here's my biggest battle is with religious people. Brian, you're too happy. You're, you're Brian, you're, you get red ear, then the vein comes out of your neck. Brian, why do you go from the right to the left to the left to the right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right, you need to stand still, get behind the pulpit, and put your foot up here like this and look at eyes. And then you got some religious people that sit there and go, why are you looking at me all the time? <laughs> Could that be the Holy Spirit got your attention? Listen, it's time to be the church. Elkhorn, look at me. Let's get addicted. I never told anybody that before. Let's just get addicted. Let's just get addicted. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what is addicted to alcohol is like. You know what addicted to drugs is like. Just get addicted to Jesus, and you'll never get addicted to anything else. <laughs> Preach that, preacher. I think I will. Woo! Become a junkie. I wrote this in my own personal notes. Y'all can look at me if you want to. Become a junkie for Jesus. What's a good preacher right there, friend? Uh, get high on Jesus. Get drunk in the Holy Ghost. I don't care. Y'all may look at me like that. Get addicted to Jesus. 
I know what it was like running with the devil. I felt him. I felt the repercussions of the next day. I'm just telling you, there's something shifting in this church. There's something changing in the atmosphere. And I highly advise in these last days. How many of y'all believe you're living in the last days besides your pastor up here? If that's true, God said, we're going to do greater. We're going to do greater. Here's another point, <laughs> how to get you out of the deal. And here's, this is good. <laughs> I love finding stuff like this because, man, this is just preach all by itself. A dead battery can't jump a dead battery. Get away from people who can't charge your spirit when you need a jump. Leave it up there, leave it up there, leave it up there, leave it up there, leave it up there. The people you hang around, my granny was right. Yeah, my granny was so right. And my granny was a better preacher than I was. Or am. Dead batteries can't jump dead batteries. You, if you, <laughs> that's so good. Get away from people. Everybody say, get away from people. What? Well, get away from people who can't charge your spirit. You know why mean people hang around mean people? They connect. They connect. They connect. You know why? People who are religious can't hang around. People who are full of the Holy Ghost, they don't connect. Watch, I'm just saying, get away from people who can't charge your spirit when you need a jump. How many of y'all need a jump this morning? Was it Eddie Van Halen? I said jump. Everybody. I asked a, a very wise older man this week. True story. How are you so successful? Because looking at him on the outside, and he is a successful man, a man of God. And I was curious. I asked a lot of questions. I'm like, how did you become so successful? How come with everything that you have been dealt with in life, you did not quit? You did not quit. I want you to listen to this man. He's in his 80s. This man lost three children. He lost his wife. He's battling cancer right now. He's a type 1 diabetic. He got fired from his church. He's blind in his right eye. And the list goes on and on and on. And I want to give you what this man said. How come I stayed so successful and I did not quit in the dip? Are y'all ready for this? 80-some-year-old man, little geezer. Here's what this man said. Three ways to fail at everything in life. If you write these three things down as a note taker. And you listen, I'm just telling you it's wise to get around people a whole lot smarter than you. Three ways to fail. At everything in life, number one, complain about everything. <laughs> you want to fail? You want to fall? You want to stay in the dip? Just complain about everything. How many of you know people that just complain about everything? They walk in, they go like this. They speak in tongue, don't even realize it. It's a foreign language. They complain about everything. If you want to remain a failure, if you want to stay in the ditch, if you want to live in the dip of your life, and watch this, there are people that have become comfortable staying in the dip. He said these words. Complain about everything. Number two, blame others for your problems. <laughs> there comes a time, y'all watch, lean in. I'm almost done, I think. <laughs> Blame, blame everybody for what's going on in your life. There comes a time in your life you got a man up, you got a woman up, and you got to say, no, this is what God's telling me. This is what's going on in my life. I may have not had the best circumstances. I may have not been be delivered the best situations in my life. I may have a bad hand of cards in my life, but this is what's going on in my life. you got to quit. Watch. you got to quit blaming everybody around you. If you've been to 15 churches and none of them have worked out. I'm getting ready to get down there. Every time you go to Kroger's and everything's expired. And you get on Facebook. Facebook. 
Come on, somebody. I want to get better. Well, I'm trying to get you out of the dip. You've got to quit blaming your mama. You've got to quit blaming your daddy. You've got to quit blaming people around you. And at some point in your life, you've got to look at you, the person looking back at you from the mirror. Who is that person? What's going on in that person? Quit blaming the church. Quit blaming the leadership. Quit bl- Told you. Number three, he says, you, you want to fail? You want to stay in the dip? Never be grateful. Yeah. Ne- never be grateful. You ask people how they're doing? <laughs> That's not the Holy Ghost, all right? Oh, watch aisle 13 at Walmart. That's, they, I don't know what about aisle 13, but it's true. Watch it, watch it. It's true. You ask somebody how they're doing, my God. They'll tell you everything that's wrong in their life, and you never hear what God has done for them, where God's brought them from, what God is doing in them, that they're going to heaven, they ain't going to hell. You ain't you don't hear stuff like that. You know why? Because they ain't grateful. You take a grateful person that they know where God's brought them from, watch out, that's a stick of dynamite. All y'all got to do is light the wick. So in Jesus Christ's name, he said, he said these things, listen to me. Yeah, complain about everything. <laughs> Blame others for, what, for your problems and never be grateful. He said, if you do that, I promise you, you'll live in the dip. You'll live in the dip. And then he said something, I took note of this and I wrote it down. I said, can I really use this one too? He's like, sure, go ahead. He said, you know, Brian, it takes 72 muscles in your face to smile. And it takes 108 muscles in your face to frown. He just said, it's easier for me to smile than it is to frown. 72 muscles to smile, 108 to frown. So somebody's wasting more energy on frowning than you are smiling. Be happy. Don't worry. Be happy. Y'all, that's ADHD. I don't care. That's just the way it is in my mind. Yeah. So, so church, can I be honest with y'all this morning? You say, Brian, I hope so. You're preaching. Why do we say that, Corny? You ever notice that people want to tell you, like, can I just tell you the truth? Can I be? No, lie to me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> lie to me. So I can't tell y'all how many times, I'm being honest with you, that I have wanted to quit. You got a pastor in front of you. I'm not one of these get up here and, and got a Superman cape on. A phone booth, like some of y'all think that I do. There has been seasons in my life. I just got out of one last year. I wanted to watch. I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to tell y'all too. Y'all asked for this. I wanted to quit church. I wanted to quit ministry. I wanted to quit life. I just flat out wanted to quit. How many can testify? Be honest that there's been times in your life that you wanted to quit. The rest of you lying. There's going to be an altar call. Matter of fact, praise team, you guys come. There's going to be an altar call. We come to church and lie more at church than we do at the minute mark. This last slide I'm going to show y'all. I was studying for this and preparing for it. Now, I've seen this slide. And to me, this is one of the most important reasons why we all, look, should not quit in the dip. This slide really got in my heart, my spirit. I thought about quitting, but then I noticed who was watching. I thought about quitting, but then I noticed who was watching. Can I be honest with y'all this morning? My my wife is watching me right now. (laughs) My children, my children are watching me right now you guys y'all are watching me right now you know it's pretty sad when you go out to eat supper like last night and a lady was talking to my wife and she said i thought that was the car y'all's car outside and i'm like dana she knows what we drive (laughs) see my mind thinks like that 
Not only does she know what I drive, she knows who I am. <laughs> Listen to me. That young man that you're holding, Brent, he's watching you. Jess, he's watching you. Leadership, people are watching us. Woo! There's always people are watching how y'all worship. They're watching y'all in the hallways at school. They're watching your Facebook post. Preach it, preacher. They're watching everything you do. Not only what you drive, but who you are. How you talk. The jokes that you tell at work that may not be glorifying God. The foul language is coming out of your... Can I preach? This is not vacation. Listen, if you're, if you're a guest here today, I, this is Elkhorn. This is just Elkhorn. This is, this is what it takes for God to get my attention. I don't seem to need somebody patting me on the back all the time and saying, boy, good job, Brian. No, I, sometimes I need a burr under the saddle. Sometimes I need somebody looking me in my eye and reading my mail on a Sunday morning and saying, you know what? If you want to get out of the dip, you got to quit complaining. you got to quit blaming others. You never stop. And somebody's always watching you. <laughs> and here's what I found in my life. Because I deal with this all the time. People who are sick or going through a disease or going through depression. Somebody's watching you. Yeah. And I found out if that's what I have to go through in my life. To bless somebody else, y'all are worth the fight. Y'all are worth the fight. All the hell. All the hard times. Y'all are worth the fight. That son, that daughter of yours, that grandchild, they're watching you. They're watching how you act, how you react. They're watching everything about you. And so I love you guys with all my heart. And that's how I'm going to conclude this series. That you don't need to quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. Don't quit in the dip. Somebody right now just needs to praise your way out of the dip. Somebody right now, you just need to change your vocabulary. Hallelujah. You need to go from a negative person to a positive person. You need to start lifting your hands toward heaven. And listen, we all, we all got something going on in our life here today. My question to you, my question to myself, can you praise yourself out of the dip? So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, if you are blessed in this house, if you're born again in this house, if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if he got you out of the dip before, hallelujah, he'll get you out of the dip again. He's not forgot about us. He's still God. He's still on the throne. And I'm going to praise my way out of the dip this morning. I want y'all to turn it up. Come on. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. I want y'all to stand to your feet. And I want you just to open your mouth and start giving God praise. Come on, praise your way out of the dip. God, I love you. I'm going to praise you, God. I'm not defeated. God, I'm more than a conqueror, God. You will get me out of the dip. For greater is he that is in me than he is in the world. God, I praise you. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor. Tell him, say, don't quit in the dip. 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 Don't quit. In the dip. Don't you quit in the dip. I bind sickness. I bind disease. I bind the spirit of divorce. I bind cancer. I bind it by the name above all other names. Hey, Brian, do you believe it? I believe every word. Every word. Every word. Every word. Some of y'all need to quit debating God and surrender. I tell you what. No, I, te I, I tell you what. I highly advise you to bow down now. Why you can bow? Because there's, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that he is God. I, I'm just choosing to do it today. I'm not going to wait till I die and have to stand before God with fire in his eyes. 
If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, come run into this altar. If you're backslidden, come run into this altar. If you're far from God, come run into this altar. Today's your day. Today's your day. God's got you here for a reason. And with a crowd of this size and magnitude, I know that I know that I know somebody here today needs a Savior. So they're going to start this music. And they're going to sing. They're going to fill this atmosphere up. Daddies, your family's watching you. Children, youth, somebody's watching you. I'm watching you. Yeah. So in Jesus Christ's name, let's come to this altar. Or just make make your seat an altar. And let God love on you. So Father God, I preach the word. I've done exactly what you told me to do. Lord, save, deliver, and set free in here today. Lord, we want to sit with you just for a little bit here. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Let us do a spiritual inventory of our lives, where we're at, and what we need to do. In Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people said.